SpaceX removes Starlink RV. Now here's the problem. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. It is a Starlink day. We're going to be talking about something that just transpired over there. They ended up moving the let's call it Starlink RV to a new service called Rome. So they got rid of RV altogether. But there is a problem. There is a big problem for certain individuals. And a lot of you have written into the show. And I want to touch on this because I think it's very important that if you are a residential customer and you feel the need to move into Rome, don't do it until you watch this video. All right. And I'm going to tell you all the ins and outs and whys and why nots. Okay. During this video. So watch to the end. It's very important. It's mission critical in my personal opinion. So before we dive deep into this topic, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. They're 100% free. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. If you enjoyed this video, even the least consider throwing in a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, as of yet, please do so. And then click this little button over here so you'll get notifications when I go live or when a new video comes out. I should be going live today, guys, today. <laughs> Anyways, if you want to just say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down there that you can use. That'd be awesome. Or if you just want to become a member of the channel, that would be even better. Also, and lastly, if you want more Starlink coverage, I have over 120 videos in a Starlink playlist. Go check that out. Just go over to the channel's main homepage, then head over to playlist and you will see the Starlink playlist there. So anyways, guys, I was reading this over on PC Magazine. I did a whole bunch of research on my own on it. I want to give you PC Magazine's take on it, and then I'm going to give you a real world subject. One of you guys wrote into the show, actually many of you, but I'm just going to highlight one of you that wrote in and said that this is a major problem. They are basically screwed. I'm going to tell you why. And once again, this is very important. Before moving from plan to plan to plan, watch this video. Trust me on this. Anyways, let's go over to the PC Magazine article. It starts out by saying, Global Roaming is now available for Starlink users if you pay $200 per month. We talked about that a few weeks ago. The new option is coming to Starlink RV, which is now rebranded as Starlink Roaming. I don't believe this is a rebrand. And once again, I'm going to tell you why in just a minute. Starlink RV already offered the ability to roam, but the internet access was restricted to the continent associated with your shipping address. So wherever you got your Starlink, originally that is the continent where you can use it, no matter if you're using RV or not. Well, the old RV, now the roam. You know what I'm saying. All men and women created by the go, you know the, you know the thing. What the hell did you just say? Users on this service can now stick with the original $150 per month regional roaming plan or upgrade to the $200 per month for global roaming. That basically allows you to roam from region to region to region. So if you were using it in the U.S., you can now take a trip to the U.K. and now use your SpaceX Starlink gear there which is kind of cool, but it's $200 per month instead of the 150. Now the 150 is $15 more than it was last month, which was like 135. We'll get to that also before the end of this video. The new service tier could be appealing to users who travel from continent to continent and need reliable internet access in remote areas. Although lugging around a Starlink dish might not be easy, last month SpaceX was also spotted sending messages about global roaming options to customers based in countries where Starlink isn't officially available. And I reported on that also. I thought that was very interesting. How does that work? However, the speeds for the global roaming option could be slow. Quote, Starlink Roam provides best effort service. There is no priority access included in the plan. This means users can expect download speeds ranging from 5 to 50 megabits per second, a decrease from the advertised 20 to 100 megabits per second with a residential package. A subscriber on the global roaming tier could also face broadband issues if they are based in a region lacking Starlink ground stations, which beam the internet data to the company 
accompany satellites above. Instead, the orbiting Starlink satellite will have to rely on laser links to help ferry the internet data to the rest of the satellite network. Well, that's kind of how it works. Basically, if you don't have a ground station near you, now that version 1.5s and 2.0 satellites have laser communication built into them, inner satellite communication, what they will do is if you're in a region that doesn't have a ground station, they will use a region close to you or a location close to you and then send the data from satellite to satellite to satellite to a ground station close to your location, then back up and then ferry it back around that way. This way, it allows SpaceX Starlink to be used by customers in areas that do not have ground stations nearby. The problem is latency. We'll get into that. As a result, one Reddit user who bought the Starlink Global Roaming plan reports suffering major latency, although the download speeds can reach as high as 130 megabits. Obviously, the latency is what's going to suffer because it takes a while to go from a ground station far away from you back to you via satellite to satellite to satellite. Okay, we're adding latency. So instead of having latency of, let's say, 30 milliseconds to 40 milliseconds, you might see latency as high as 90 to 100 milliseconds in this type of situation. They continue by saying, SpaceX didn't immediately respond to a request for comment, making it unclear if the company plans on offering global roaming to more customers in countries where Starlink has yet to receive regulatory approval. We've talked about this also in a previous video. What happens when you have global roaming and you're in a country like Iran? Will it work? Should it work? Does it not work? I, I don't know. If you are in Iran and you have Starlink, does it work? I would love to know. Let me know in the comments below. The other problem is that SpaceX hasn't provided a list of which countries support global roaming. The company's terms of service only says users can expect connectivity in, quote, any land-based destination where Starlink provides active coverage. Well, where is it? <laughs> they do this sometimes. It'll come out. It'll just take a little while. As for why SpaceX decided to rename Starlink RV, company CEO Elon Musk has previously mentioned the branding could be more accurate. SpaceX originally debuted the service tier last May as a way to use Starlink on the road or for camping trips. To do so, Starlink RV offers subscribers the ability to use satellite internet across the country rather than in one fixed location. Now, this is where the problem lies. Now, we know that RV customers get deprioritized data, right? Or basic data or best effort, let's just call it. And their bill did go from $135 a month to $150. Okay, we know that. We also know at the same time when they increased the price, they also removed portability from any customer in the United States. So if you had portability, you no longer had it because they shut that down. So what exactly does this mean? I'm glad you asked. If you were a customer back a couple of months ago and you were paying $110 for residential service. Now your residential service gives that priority access to you, the faster speeds, right? And then you were also paying the add-on fee of $25 for what they called portability. What this means is you were able to now take your dish from your residence and now move it to a campground somewhere and continue to work from there or to a mountaintop somewhere, right? Now, while you did have that dish away from your residential address, you are not going to get prioritized access. You would get deprioritized access or basic service or basic data speeds. Like they were saying, down to 5 to 50 megabits down in comparison to 20 to 100 megabits down. That's just the way it was. But that was still good enough for a lot of people that were working from home a lot of times and then they were traveling also. That portability was a major plus for them. Now, this problem was highlighted by a lot of you. I got a lot of DMs, a lot of email about this, and they were like, how do we fix this? What do we do now, Joe? And I'm like, God, I'm going to have to research this and get back to you. Now, I'm going to highlight one of the emails that I got, and this is from a nice guy named Russell. He basically wrote into Starlink and said, hey, I have SpaceX Starlink's residential service here at home, but I also have portability so I can go camping and still work while I'm away with the family. What do I do now? So what they wrote back and they said this, they said, quote, portability is not available for residential service in the U.S. 
Yeah, because they just got rid of it. You may change your address or change your service plan to RV through your Starlink account. So Russell writes to me and says this. So if I want to use my dish for working while camping, as I planned in June, then I would have to give up my prioritized access from home. Given that I work from home, I can't give that up. So my dish is now a permanent fixture on my roof and I need to check into a hot spot for working while camping. That is a major problem. That is a big problem. So I went over to SpaceX Starlink's website and I started perusing through the FAQ over there, the frequently asked questions to see if I can find some type of resolution for Russell and all the rest of you that are most likely going to have the exact same problem that currently have portability or used to have portability. I found a question or an answer to a question. The question was, how is Starlink Rome different than portability? Starlink Rome provides immediate access to high speed, low latency internet on an as need basis at any destination where Starlink provides active coverage and doesn't require a fixed residential address. Starlink Rome provides best effort service. There is no priority access included in the plan. Starlink Rome can be paused at any time via the Starlink account. Portability on the other hand, provides deprioritized service if Starlink is installed away from the fixed residential address listed on the account. Portability is an add-on service that can be removed at any time. Portability is not currently supported for in-motion use. Now, to me, that means that portability is still available, right? Well, we know that it's not, but they haven't updated this. So I looked up another question, and this question was, can I change my subscription from residential service to Starlink Roam? This is very important, very, very important. By logging into your Starlink account, you're able to switch from Starlink residential to Starlink Roam. Please note, now this is very important, folks. This is very important. We cannot offer customers the ability to change from Roam back to residential at this time. Note, portability is not available for residential service in the US. So now what? Right? Now what? So that's exactly what he was saying. And now going through their fact, this holds true. While yes, portability was absolutely perfect for him if he wanted to work from home or in his office and then take it to his campgrounds and still work for a week or two or a month or however long just by paying the extra 25 bucks. So he was out the $110 plus the 25, which was 135 bucks. Well, that's no longer available. He can't do that. So if he wants to work from home and wants to work at the campground, he has to switch his current plan with his residential, which is priority access, to a roam plan, which is deprioritized access. He can't do that. I wouldn't do that. It's literally half the speed. And you can't switch back. So if you are in this situation... Be very careful, be cognizant to the fact that if you do switch to Rome, you're not going back to residential coverage, period. You can't get that residential plan back. You would have to have both. And that's the way it was before. You would have to have an RV package and your residential package. You would have to have two. Well, they're kind of doing the exact same thing by taking away portability from U.S. residents. That is a major freaking problem. You know, the way I look at it is instead of spending, let's say, the $135 that he's spending, I think SpaceX should still offer it and maybe offer it with that new price. So instead of it being the $120, which the new plan is at now, the residential plan is $120, plus the $25 for portability, which would be $145, let's just call it an even $150. And now people can have residential and portability all in one and maybe call it Rome, but maybe it's like home Rome or res Rome or some crap like that. You guys make up the name. All right. They seem to be making up names over there at SpaceX Starlink all the time. So I don't know. For some of you guys, this is going to be good and some it's going to be bad. I think the idea of having Rome and now being able to move around wherever you want is great. 
and paying the $150 for that per month, I think that's fair. I don't think that it's too high. Now, if you want to be able to roam overseas, you could pay the 200 bucks and now roam overseas, but you are going to see not only a depreciated type of data speed, but you're also going to find a much higher latency in certain locations. Now, on the other hand, if you're roaming to an area overseas that actually has a ground station local to you or very close by, you're going to get the exact same or similar speeds that you do here as there. And actually, in the UK, for example, or in Europe in general, SpaceX Starlink is actually quicker than here in the US. So you might actually get lower latency and higher speeds if you use that service, the global service abroad. But as we read with one of the Reddit customers of Global Roam, they had some really serious latency issues. And that, once again, makes sense if you do not have a ground station nearby. That's it. So anyways, guys, I wanted to bring this to your attention because I think it is very important and things that you need to know before migrating your account to a different package. Be cognizant of it. Some packages, once you move to them, you cannot move back again. And it is hard. It is very hard today to get residential and business coverage in many locations in over 70% of the entire U.S. It is very difficult. There is waiting lists. Could be six months, a year. Who the hell knows? So do not take your residential or business package lightly. You don't want to lose it because you're not coming back or very easily. Not right now. Who knows, in the future, you might be able to migrate from residential over to Rome and then from Rome back. But as of right now, you can't. So guys, I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. If you have, throw it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you have not, take a look at my Starlink playlist. And finally, head over to my website, jadechristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for the end of the vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.